Okay guys, so as you guys can see here, I have um, two stalks of celery. I'm just chopping them up, um, no special way. Um, as you can see, my carrots are already pre-chopped. So I'm kind of just mirroring the same um, size as my carrots as I'm cutting my celery, uh, you know, just so they can all just start cooking evenly. Um, and once it's done, it'll be pretty because everything is mostly all the same size and if it's not the same size like who cares like i i'm not a professional i'm not perfect it's gonna get eight anyway so um yeah so that's all i'm doing just cutting up my celery um just so they can be around about the same size as my carrots I am I just have like one large onion however I use some of the onion <laughs> for another recipe but it really doesn't matter um, I love onions and this was more than enough onion um, honestly but yeah once again it's not a special cut it's just kind of trying to mirror um, the other vegetables keep in mind that onions are in layers so um, these chunks may look a little big but when you break them up their layers are going to separate and it'll be cool so yeah it's nothing nothing super duper spectacular just cutting up an onion um, i am a lefty so i had to be mindful of cutting in the camera so you guys can still see kind of what i'm doing but i mean it's not rocket science everybody knows how to cut up onions and celery and carrots so yeah Okay, so now I have my garlic and I'm just gonna beat them up just a little bit to get them out of the casing. Um, it's not necessarily a lot of garlic. Um, I just used what I had left over. It wasn't, I usually use like a whole lot of garlic, but whatever. Here I am just beating it up again before I chop them because that helps me um, cut them up smaller when I beat them up a little bit and they kind of like spread out, so yeah. you can make your garlic as big or as small as you want um i mean I, I like garlic but i know sometimes not a lot of people like a big chunks of garlic so i try to make it um as small as i possibly could i don't have a garlic press so this is all from the muscle this is all me <laughs> All right, so we have our short ribs here. We're just gonna season them up. Um, I just have regular salt. I don't have any of that fancy salt, the pink Himalayan salt or kosher salt or flakes. I don't have any of that. I just have my regular old salt, but I do have this uh, black pepper grinder. Um, and I must say, if you invest in anything, I would definitely say get one of these because I mean, it just was really flavorful with the heavy meat. Um, I love pepper, so it was a strong flavor and it was really, really good. So yeah, if you invest in anything, I would say get one of those. But if you don't, just use your regular old salt and pepper shakers, whatever seasoning that you know like to season your meat with, definitely do that um, because it's still gonna be good anyway. And just make sure you're getting the seasoning on all sides. Um, just because I had a decent amount still on the cutting board, I was able to just, you know, drag it around the cutting board and get the leftover seasonings. Um, just so I wouldn't over, overly salt it. Um, so it worked fine for me. If you want more, go ahead and add more. Um, and here we have flour. We're not going to deep fry them. We're just going to add a nice sear. So I just put some flour on top and I'm just going to toss them. Uh, toss the uh, ribs in the flour. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just going to sear it. And as you've seen, I had a little bit of flour left over. And that's going to be added to our gravy at the end just to help thicken it up. Um, but yeah, just go and pat the flour in because it's going to help with your sear. And yes, yeah, nothing special here. Thank you. 
All right, so the ribs are, you know, floured, and now we're just gonna put our Instant Pot on saute. Um, and just, it turns on, add some oil in the bottom of your pot, just enough just to coat, because once again, we're not deep frying them. We're just giving it a nice sear. Um, and make sure that your pot, I can't say pan, your pot is hot, um, so you can get a nice sizzle. And this is not necessarily considered like <laughs> crowdy, even though it is kind of like crowded. We're literally just giving it a sear. We're not like cooking it thoroughly this way because it's not going to be cooked. We're literally just giving it a nice skin. And as you can see, that's what the skin post would look like on all sides. So you make sure that you have to flip them over on all sides so you can get a nice sear, a nice brown sear on all sides. So as they start getting done, I just take them out. Um, you know, I'm just taking them out the grease. And this one is a little bit thicker, so I left it in. I kind of did the manual flip um, with my tongs just to make sure I got all of the sides brown because it was a pretty thick piece. Um, and now I'm just adding my vegetables into the oil and the drippings at the bottom. Um, get that a nice little mix up and add some Italian seasoning and some dried basil. And make sure as you're stirring, scrape the bottom of the pot um, and add some tomato paste. And off camera, I added more tomato paste. Um, I will add the recipe and you guys will see. Um, I added a little bit of flour just to start the thickening process. Tomato paste will also make your gravy thicker. And I added some more um, Italian seasoning and some more salt. And now for the red wine. It doesn't have to be any special red wine, um, nothing expensive. It's just something that you would want to drink and make sure that it's dry. <laughs> I know I, I have to say that because some people may not know. And I did add just a little bit of sugar just to cut out the acidity of everything and kind of uh, marry the flavors together. And add two bay leaves to add some additional flavor. And let that thing come to a boil and add your ribs back. Side note, I do know that the frame has changed. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but now we're just gonna add two cups of uh, beef stock um, to our wine and our ribs. And we're gonna put our Instant Pot on pressure cook for about 40 minutes. And this is what it looks like. That red wine, let me tell y'all, like this was so good. Um, and now I'm just getting some of the fat off the top, just skimming it off and separating our vegetables from the gravy and just adding a bit of thickener. Now it's time to make the polenta. Um, so what I am now doing is measuring how four cups of chicken stock and not realizing the container is four cups. So just dump the whole container in and let it come to a boil and then add one cup of polenta um, to your boiling water and make sure that you are stirring vigorously nonstop because you don't want um, it to start clumping up. So kind of just keep, keep giving it a whisk. Um, just keep beating it up just for, you know, vigorously, I would say for like a minute, two minutes, and then it gets thicker. Added some butter, some whole cream, and some Parmesan cheese, and a little bit of salt and pepper. And mix it up, and that thing is going to get so nice and creamy, y'all. Like, it's not, I'm not even playing. This looks ridiculous. Oh my gosh. All right, so now we have our Brussels sprouts. Um, and yeah, we're just cutting the things in half. Um, they're already rinsed and dried. Um, we're just cutting them in half um, just to get them prepared for our, for our pan. As you can see, the pan is beside me and I have foil on it. Um, that pan is so beat up. <laughs> so the foil comes in handy because I need a new pan. Um, but yeah, you should probably use for you anyway for this um, just because we're gonna add a sticky balsamic glaze on top um, but yeah just cutting them up getting them ready to get in that pan All 
All right, so we got all of the Brussels sprouts in the pan, and now we just take a little bit of olive oil and just toss all of the Brussels sprouts in the olive oil. Make sure that olive oil touches all of your Brussels sprouts because um, that's gonna make it nice and crispy and super good. Uh, so yeah, just make sure that you're getting them tossed all in the olive oil. And now we're just gonna do some seasoning, just some salt and pepper um, and uh, garlic powder, uh, crushed garlic, and my favorite seasoning. Everybody has their opinion, but this one is one of my favorite. You'll see in a second. Here is accent. I love to put it on my vegetables, um, my meat, on uh, everything. Uh, so yeah, and yeah. Now we've got some garlic in there. Just toss it all together um, to make sure that every single Brussels sprout gets some seasoning, gets some garlic, gets some accent. Yeah. And kind of when you do this, the garlic kind of falls, of course down to the pan. So what I'm just doing is kind of scraping up some of my garlic um, just to even out my Brussels sprouts and toss it back on the top. And just make sure that your Brussels sprouts are even just so when I put it in the oven, it cooks evenly. Um, and now we have our bacon and onion. And I initially thought that I was gonna chop up the bacon, but I'm like, I'm gonna crumble it up anyway when I cook it. So I kind of just gave up. Um, <laughs> and this is like half of a small onion. Um, it's not even a full half. It's just a piece of onion. You can use as much or as little as you want. I love onions. So this was enough for me for my Brussels sprouts. Um, but yeah, I just chopped this up. I kind of want these pieces to be a bit smaller than the initial cutting of onions <laughs> in the video. Um, just because we're going to crumble up bacon and we kind of want to mirror the same size. They're not going to be the same exact size, but I just want to make them just, you know, kind of the same size if possible. So yeah, it's not the best cutting job, but I mean, it gets the job done. And now we just add a little bit of oil to my pan um, and I'm gonna fry bacon. That was just a little bit of olive oil. Um, bacon makes its own fat, I know, but um, I just sometimes like to add just a little bit of oil in the pan um, just to get the bacon going. And I add my onions while the bacon is cooking and this smell is amazing, amazing. All right, so we have our balsamic vinegar and we're just gonna bring it to a rapid boil. And once we let it come to a rapid boil and then let it set, it becomes super sticky. So we just top our bacon and our onion and our balsamic glaze over the Brussels sprouts. Crazy. And it is just so bomb, so delicious. And look how pretty this is. It literally tastes better than what it looks. And it looks so pretty. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys attempt this because it was not hard at all.